Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, I have uh, been uh, live editing all the speeches, so I've been listening intently to what everyone said. And I just feel that um, uh, I would like to share with you a couple of observations, comments, thoughts, um, very briefly before we conclude. Uh, the first is an ideological point. And um, the second is a more practical marketing oriented point, which I'll talk about later. On an ideological note, I just feel that um, we have assumed a certain ideological construct in this whole debate. And we are positing all our thoughts against that one idea or construct. Um, I felt in a couple of the debates, some of the speakers touched or tried to touch very, uh, being very afraid of um, talking about um, and what could be called an antithetical uh, theory. And uh, what, I, what I'm talking about is this. We are assuming that a certain liberal discourse is essential for a vibrant media. And we have taken all our thoughts to reflect whether censorship is good or bad, and what is censorship in the older, olden era, and what is censorship in today through the market-driven mechanism, etc. Now, I would like to present a completely contrary view. I grew up in the Zia era. Okay? I, was, I was born in 1972. And I was therefore about uh, seven years old when Mr. Zia came to power. I grew up in an era when Maghrib ke waqt you had to be home, uh, when television meant sitting with the family and the parents not being afraid of what was going to be shown on television. I grew up in an era when khane ke waqt achhe drame aate the, jab sab saath bed ke drame dekhte the, ek bonding hoti thi. Television was a space of bonding for the family. It was not a space of separation that the parents have to watch one channel separate from their children, where children are afraid that if my mother comes, they have to switch the channel, where uh, children are migrating to the internet to watch content which they know is not right in our cultural norms. I grew up in that era. And I, for one, and um, I'm very strongly convinced that my thought process is not because I grew up in the Zia era, it is because this is the way we are as Pakistanis. Pakistanis are a conservative people. So this whole idea that liberal ideology has to be imposed by media for it to be vibrant, I honestly reject it completely. I don't believe this. If this were the case, Iran would not have the vibrant media and film scene that it does have, where real stories are discussed where real debates do take place in film, and where their films are, are received very well internationally. So I think, you know, with all due respect to all the panelists and all the moderators who tried to moderate, I, I would like to say that uh, the reason why I insisted that I come and speak um, was that I want to present another point of view. That's the first point, that I think that only one ideology was presented today, and that we should consider the fact that we are a conservative nation, and there's nothing wrong with being conservative. We have to get over this um, post-colonial shadow that we have in our culture, that we don't consider ourselves good enough, that we don't consider our own traditions and culture good enough, that we have to be like the West, that we have to ape the white man, that just because I'm using a latest piece of technology, that... Okay, I'm sorry, Anthony, please don't take it personally. Um, just because I'm using a latest piece... <laughs> no, sorry. Um, just because I'm using the latest piece of technology and that we're sitting in a media department, I do not imbibe the rest of the ideology that comes with the technology. I say we take the technology, but we don't lose our tradition. I say we don't lose our culture. What's wrong with being strongly embedded in the soil, in believing in what we believe, while progressing and while being modern. So this whole, I, I reject this hypothesis completely that to be modern, one has to be liberal. I am completely modern in my outlook and I'm completely conservative. Those of, who, of you who know me, know me as being a complete dichotomy. And this is the Pakistan of today. We embrace modernity, but we reject liberalism. This has to be the way that media has to treat us as well. If you look at all the dramas that, that deal with religion, 
in one way or another, they posit it as a clash. It doesn't have to be a clash. I would like to see a world where media doesn't have to be this or that, where we don't have to be urban or rural, where we don't have to be Mahajir or Sindhi or Punjabi or Baloch. We can be one and media can be that. It can unite us. I don't, I don't believe that the Taliban will ever rule Pakistan, but I also reject the fact that liberals will rule Pakistan either. Pakistan is a very moderate society and we have to remain within the moderate band which is acceptable to our country as a whole. Now, coming to the second thing, which is marketing. Now, if any of you have studied how the rating system in Pakistan works, it's highly flawed. We, we only consider certain socioeconomic classifications in the ratings. We don't consider others. There are only 500 rating sets, people's meters all over Pakistan. The 600, there are only whatever, 600, 700, it's a highly flawed system. The sampling is all wrong. The data that comes in is totally skewed. It's not live data, it comes in one week later. In some cases, it comes in two weeks later. There are problems with the data set. There are problems in the decision making. There are channels who are getting rating that are not even shown in 10% of the households in Pakistan. So the whole marketing machine is being engineered for a certain outcome. And that outcome is leading us up a path where we are bound to come to a clash, a clash of cultures. The real culture of Pakistan versus this imposed Western dominated liberal ideological culture which is being forced on us. Now having said that, right, this discourse could not have happened if a very liberal person was not the head of the department. So all credit to Dr. Framji. He, I had, to be honest, I had sounded him out, ke main ye baat ja ke. Sahi hai? and he said, please go ahead. And this is true liberal uh, outlook, where you accept other points of view, where you're willing to debate and discourse, where you know that there are other perspectives on every topic. And this is actually the hallmark of a strong liberal arts education, which we're trying to imbibe in our media science students over here at Zabist that there is no one dominant ideology. You have to know yourself, just like what Aisha was touching on very, very, very briefly, that we are in a post-colonial state, which, um, and Ms. Shireen Pasha and I were discussing this last night as well, that it's taken us about 60 years to come to terms with our you know, nation's ideology, and I think it's not yet resolved, but it seems as if the argument is now between two completely opposing forces, whereas the masses of Pakistan are firmly in the center and they don't want to be either here or there. But there are two very, very strong voices. One voice is that of the Taliban and the retrogressive forces who wish to impose their Stone Age version of the Sharia on us. And the other is this very, very virulent Western-driven ideology that is being imposed on us through the media. Both are rejected by the majority of the people of Pakistan, but we are not able at the moment, we are not able to find our post-colonial center, and I think we will. I think Pakistanis are very resilient. We uh, survive suicide bombings. We'll certainly survive the liberal bombing as well. This will happen. Both sides will continue to bomb us, and in the end, a certain uh, homeostasis will inshallah be reached in Pakistan, and we'll have a really very vibrant media culture, and I look forward to that time. Thank you very much. Um, I want to just leave you with a few words. Um, and actually, they're not my words. They're written by a guy named William Seemering. William Seemering was one of the spearheaded, the spearheads and founders of National Public Radio in the US. And uh, his, uh, the mission statement that he wrote in 1970 for National Public Radio is equally applicable for television. And that's why I would like to leave you with that. He said, National Public Radio will serve the individual. It will promote personal growth. It will regard individual differences among men with respect and joy rather than derision and hate. It will celebrate the human experience as infinitely varied rather than vacuous and banal. It will encourage a sense of active, constructive participation rather than apathetic helplessness. 
In its cultural mode, National Public Radio will preserve and transmit the cultural past, will encourage and broadcast the work of contemporary artists, and provide listeners with an oral, A-U-R-A-L, aesthetic experience with in, which enriches and gives meaning to the human spirit. In its journalistic mode, National Public Radio will actively explore, investigate, and interpret issues of national and international import. The programs will enable the individual to better understand himself, his government, his institutions, and his natural and social environment, so he can intelligently participate in affecting the process of change. The total service should be trustworthy, enhance intellectual development, expand knowledge, deepen oral aesthetic enjoyment, increase the pleasure of living in a pluralistic society, and result in a service to listeners which makes them more responsive, informed human beings, and intelligent, responsible citizens of their communities and the world. Thank you very much.